Poets used to wonder what immortal hand or eye could frame a wild thing as perfect as a tiger. Sadly, that perfection didn't stop the human race from all but wiping out the wild tigers that once ranged from Turkey to the east coast of Russia. A hundred years ago, there were a hundred thousand of these creatures. Today, there are about four thousand. This decline has helped focus attention on an extremely controversial plan to legalize the sale of tiger products in China plan that would supposedly replace the wild tigers killed by poachers with captive tigers raised and killed on legal Chinese farms. The leading backers of this plan include the wealthy Chinese businessmen who built these farms to feed what used to be a giant legal market for traditional Chinese medicines made with tiger bones and organs. When China banned domestic sales of tiger parts in 1993, many experts thought these farms would close their doors forever. But that's not what happened. What the tiger farmers did instead was store their carcasses while breeding more tigers in captivity. Spokesmen for these farmers now claim that the farms will put tiger poachers out of business if the ban on Chinese tiger sales is lifted by flooding the medicinal markets with mass-produced tiger parts that would sell for less than the tiger parts offered by the poachers. Critics of this plan have noted that legal ivory sales did not eliminate elephant poaching problems, nor did legal sales of body parts from bears raised in captivity make bear poachers go away. But that hasn't stopped a lot of free market economists from hailing the new tiger farming plan. They call it a breakthrough that would make it possible for tigers to pay their way back from the brink. Groups like those are now pressuring China to rescind its ban on domestic sales of tiger parts, even as other groups are arguing that this new plan is full of economic holes. To choose just one example, how on earth can a farmer who pays thousands of dollars to feed just one captive tiger hope to undersell a poacher who can kill for the price of a bullet? Finally, it's hard to put a lot of faith in tiger farms if you have ever been to one. Groups of tourists who visit these places see a lot of listless tigers pacing back and forth inside tiny, crowded cages. Tourists who pay extra get to watch the staff dump live chickens into cages full of hungry tigers. Tourists who pay a little more get to go outside and watch the tigers chase down cows and sheep. Some of these pathetic chases take much longer than they should because captive tigers have never learned how to hunt. It's also been said that many of the tigers on these farms have been crippled by generations of inbreeding. One thing tourists don't get to see when they visit tiger farms is the massive freezers full of carcasses that have been waiting for more than a decade to be sold. But those freezers have been filmed by undercover conservationists. For reasons like these, we are convinced that there is absolutely nothing tigers raised on farms can do to save their wild cousins. If the Chinese government decides to lift the sales ban, more captive tigers will be killed and the wild tigers will still vanish. Oh, and one more thing, no captive-born tiger has ever been released to the wild and survived.